Hokey dokey. A second example for this problem. If you'd like more of a breakdown, please visit the first example I've worked out. It's a pretty long problem, so I will do my best to do this one uh, much faster, but still be, you know, uh, solid with the explanation. So the first step is to find the antiderivative for each of these three functions. Starting with G1, we have 11 over t plus 2. Anytime we just have a t term or t plus 2 or whatever to the first power, we will be using the natural log as its antiderivative. So the 11 on top just stays on top. And then from the t plus 2 on the bottom, we will have an antiderivative of ln of t plus 2 with the absolute value bars. And we add plus c. Then for, <clears throat> excuse me, the second g function, we have t squared, which has an antiderivative of t cubed over 3. And then the 7 that's on the bottom will stay on the bottom. And so when we have 3 and 7 on the bottom being multiplied, the result is 21. And then plus 1 will go to plus 1t, or just plus t, and then plus c. G3, antiderivative of any e term, will be that same exact e term. And then because the point 2 is in front of the t, we want to divide by point 2 to accommodate for the chain rule that would have brought out a point 2 and since there's no point 2 here, we need to divide by point 2 so that the point 2 that comes out in front when doing the derivative of this will cancel out with the one on the bottom. So basically just whenever you have e to the number times t, the antiderivative is that same e term divided by the coefficient of the exponent. So we still also have the 3 on the bottom. So point 2 times 3 Is 0 0.6 and then plus c so we have our three <clears throat> excuse me antiderivatives now we use the initial population of one to solve for c for all three of these functions and uh, the word initial means t equals zero and the population means that g equals one for all three g's but we have to solve for c separately for each one because we might get different c values. So for g1, g is equal to 1. And so c is equal to 1 minus 11 natural log of 2. And so we break out Desmos. We calculate 1 minus 11 natural log of 2. And we get negative 6.6 .6 approximately. So this is our C1, basically. So I'll go ahead and plug that in here. And we'll move on to G2. So again, we're inputting G, uh, we're inputting 1 for G and 0 for T. When we do that to these two T terms, everything zeroes out except for C, of course, because 0 cubed over 21 plus 0 is just zero across the board here except for the c value so we have that c is equal to one and this was our second c so c2 now for the last one g3 is also equal to one when t is equal to zero so we plug in zero to the t and we have 0.2 times zero is just zero and then divided by 0.6 and then plus c and so anything raised to the zero power is one. So we have one over 0.6. So one minus one over 0.6 equals C3, and that'll be equal to negative 0.6 repeating or negative two thirds. And so C3 is negative two Third. So I'll just call it minus two thirds. All right, we're on the home stretch. Now the idea is to plug in t equals five to all three functions 
and then order them from greatest to least. So in decreasing order. So starting with G1 of 5, then G2 of 5, and G3 of 5. We will just use Desmos for all three of these. So let's get a view on these three. And we'll split screen it with Desmos. And we'll plug 5 in for T for all three of these as quickly as we can. 11 LN of t plus 2 or 5 plus 2 which is 7 minus 6.6 .6, we get 14.8 let's jump right to g2 5 cubed over 21 plus t which is 5 and then plus 1 so 11.9 and then g3 we have e raised to the point 0.2 times t, which is 5, and we're dividing this all by point 0.6, and then subtracting 2 thirds to get 3.86 or 3.9 if we round. So let's jump back into this and insert the values in order that we got for G1, G2, and G3, ordering them from greatest to least. It looks like they're already ordered from greatest to least. So G1 is greater than G2 is greater than G3. And these are all at T equals 5. All right, so that direction with all those values looks like option a let's break out the eraser to see that a is our answer if you have any questions on antiderivatives of specific terms or how i did anything here uh, first visit the first example i've worked out otherwise feel free to leave a comment all right hope this helps